thinking a lot about this, you know, how, how do those of us who really want to resonate from a deeper level of open heartedness and really do have hope and want to see that human beings are capable of the highest levels of compassion and charity and innovation and that it is actually uh, in some way our birthright in terms of how our biology is built with the, with the parts of our brain and even this idea of those who really say that the heart is the highest, highest actually part of our brain and that that is really what our spiritual evolution is and our, and our, and our cultural evolution and, and our evolution, biological evolution, is that for those of you who know how the brain is developed, starting with the reptilian brain, the most basic instincts, what people will call the lizard brain, moving into the limbic brain, which is more about connected, which was the, limb, the reptilian brain being about survival and the basic needs of not going extinct as a species. Um, and we've evolved into the limbic brain, which is more about cultivating relationships and understanding more complex ways of engaging with one another that just goes beyond basic survival, that goes into interpersonal relationship and emotion and, and memory and deep memory and how, we, how, how that plays into social structures. Moving into the frontal cortex, which is highest reasoning, and, uh, and which is what we have been gifted with in our biology as human beings. And there are those, and I believe this is a wonderful book by Joseph Chilton Pierce called uh, The Biology of Transcendence, where he scientifically in some way prove, or proves or just believes that the heart is the newest, in a sense, part of our brains. And that we've seen examples of higher beings and teachers on this planet who have actually cultivated that final step of integrating the heart with the rest of the brain, which is our birthright, which is in our biology. And, the re and many of us make attempts to connect that, and we can do that when we're in retreats or we're in, uh, in, in, in nature or we're, we're at peace with ourselves, where the heart integrates with the brain. And we're in, our, in a sense, you could say our frequency is at its highest, where we have the highest capacity for compassion and for beneficial deeds and for wisdom. And what often keeps us from that is enculturation and how our culture and society keeps pulling us down into patterns that keep us in the more reptilian or lower parts of our brain, basic survival, basic trauma and wounds and fear. And, the, and I think that's just a way of framing what we're being called to at this moment around the world is with a lot of leaders who are, are, are not functioning from the highest levels of the brain and, <laughs> and, are, and are actually very cleverly using the more reptilian aspects of ourselves to, 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 to wield power. And, you know, you know, you can discuss that on a global level, but I just find for myself from day to day, what is the amount of energy, time and effort and energy it keeps, takes for me to not get caught up into that polarization, that us and theming, that good and badding, uh, that victim perpetrator, and, uh, and, 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 and in a sense we're being seduced into getting down to that level because at that level nothing can transform nothing can new solutions can't be emerge can emerge so this practice for me is really how do i keep for myself my own no, it's not for anybody else it's for me for my own values and my own sense of how i want to be in the world of con continually cultivating a practice that rem helps me remember that truly in our hearts, human beings are good beings, are compassionate beings, that our true nature is compassion and wisdom. And, even, and, and that, and, and I, it's easy to forget, especially in times with a lot of grief, when a lot of pain is happening. And you know, one way I frame that in terms of discussions with others is, and I think this is really up now in this country, and I think it'll be interesting as we move towards, in the United States, towards Thanksgiving, where people are going to be 
maybe with family members who have different political viewpoints, per perhaps, is remembering that the issues aren't, it's the, pro the, the challenge right now is not what people are saying, it's how they're saying it. The problem isn't the, aren't the issues. The issues were always there. The issues can be discussed. All issues can be discussed, even from, from a, abortion and, and, and the right to choose. You can have a discussion about that. It can be a fiery discussion, but there can be a discussion and new solutions can emerge with anything, with immigration, with any of the issues. It's not at this moment what's being discussed, it's how it's being discussed. And I just wanna bring that up in terms of how we are approaching ourselves, the self-talk we have with ourselves, and also how we're approaching others. The issues in this in, are, are heavy, they're not easy, they're not pleasant, they're messy. The question is how are we approaching it? And that's what I'm advocating for, and I'm hoping that we can cultivate that as well. And that's the purpose of this call, of this uh, session, this meditation session, is to gather with people around the world to cultivate a practice of generating the highest capacity of compassion that we can generate. And that it's not just an idea, it's not just a dream, it's really a, a, a biological, physical thing that we can cultivate so that when we do go out into the world, we're holding space in a different way, not only to our loved ones, but to strangers and to our enemies. And that, in a sense, this is the idea of lasting peace. Who are, the, who are those at this moment on the planet who are really cultivating the practices that are gonna be needed in one year, in five years, in 10 years, that are gonna help us in a slow and steady process towards creating a society where we all get to be honored and where we can all respect one another and where there can be peace. So I set that up as the motivation. Uh, and in this meditation, it's called the uh, core exercise for lasting peace. For those of you who know the core exercise, it's a variation on it. Uh, and I just always start by saying there's no right way of doing this. There's no wrong way. It's about finding your way with this. Uh, and I will be leading you through this. And then um, when the meditation is done, then if there are things you wanna share, we have a couple of minutes to just share some reflections. So to get started, this core exercise is the, is the, is the core of the practice of respectful confrontation, that to be able to be effective in standing in your power, speaking your truth, getting your needs met in a way where you don't get harmed and other people don't get harmed. It starts with first cultivating a deeper level of presence, awareness, deeper listening, and a connection with yourself, with your surroundings, and with others. From that place, that's a great starting point, a skillful starting point uh, to navigate through challenges and to, with others, come up with new solutions to our current problems. So finding a way to sit where you are, where your spine is straight. Where you can sit without distraction or, or a minimum of distraction, as still as possible. Bringing your awareness to your center, which is what I would call the core. And if you were to investigate that, that's the width of three fingers below your navel and a third of the way into the body. So if you wanna feel that, you might wanna put your fingers together, put your index finger over your navel and where your pinky resides, that's the width of three fingers below your navel. From that point, bring your awareness inside towards your, towards what I would call your center. Bring your full attention to that spot. If 
feeling the parts of your body that are connecting with the chair or the cushion or the floor. Really training yourself to open up that awareness. It's, it's, there's something very soothing to the nervous system, even healing when you can always be aware of the contact points you're making, your body's making with whatever environment you're in. And then uh, so feeling the points of your body that are connecting with the chair and the floor and a little, through gravity, allowing yourself to just sink in and let yourself be held. It's a great gift to your nervous system. And with this awareness of your center, the width of three fingers below your navel, we call this your place of personal power, how you perceive your reality. Understanding the power of awareness as opposed to thinking or feeling. From your center, become aware of your physical body. Let the body speak to you through sensation. Tension, relaxation, breath, heartbeat. From your center, become aware of your emotional body. What emotions are you present to? Knowing that all feelings are welcome in this exercise, allowing energy to flow through you and emotions to flow through you. using this exercise to bring you deeper into the present moment. The entrance way at this moment to the present moment is yourself. First physically, now emotionally. Now from your center, become aware of your mental body. How are your thoughts? Keeping your awareness in your center, and I'm bringing also awareness to your heart or the middle of your chest, where your heart power resides. When you cultivate the frequencies of respect, compassion, love, wisdom, understanding, connection, honor, bringing that in combination with your personal power in your, in your lower belly and your center. And from your center and from your heart, asking yourself the question, how connected do I feel at this moment to something larger than myself? Focusing not so much on what that larger self 
larger self is, something larger than yourself, but more the connection at this moment. And give yourself the gift of experiencing that, even if it's 3% connection. And now with more of an awareness of yourself in this present moment, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, take a deep breath in, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now with more of an awareness of yourself in this present moment, the starting point of, of who you are, from your center and from your heart, become aware of your surroundings. In all directions. Sounds, smells. And as you see in this exercise, the core exercise, it's not that you're trying to not be, to eliminate your surroundings, you're actually deepening your engagement with your surroundings. And noticing how your surroundings may be impacting you at this moment. And how you may be impacting your surroundings. With more of an awareness of yourself and your surroundings in this present moment, take a full breath in, in through your nose and out through your mouth. And now expanding your awareness and your, and, and your sense of presence from your center and from your heart with more of an awareness of yourself and your surroundings. Open up to a connection with those who are on this meditation with you. In different parts of the world. Is it possible from your center and from your heart to actually cultivate and feel a connection with this circle of meditators? Strengthening our own sense of personal power and heart power by allying with others, cultivating the same thing. And with this sense of empower, of feeling more, perhaps more empowered and present with yourself, your surroundings, and with your fellow meditators, take a full breath in, in through your nose, out through your mouth. <clears throat> and let's use this cultivation of presence with self and with this meditation community at this moment in this circle to exp expand our capacity for compassion and connection with all human beings. And maintaining your awareness of yourself, your surroundings, your fellow meditators from your center and from your heart, open up to a deeper connection with those that you would call loved ones, family members, friends, colleagues, teachers, and 
and dancing with that question all the time. How might I be impacting them at this moment simply by opening my awareness to them from my heart and my personal power? And how might they be impacting me at this moment? What would it be like if I actually could cultivate this at every moment in my life? And expanding our capacity for compassion, opening to a larger fraction of the human family from your center and from your heart, opening to a connection with those you might call strangers. All, all strangers around the planet, those that are on the other side of the world, those that you just passed today on the street, someone in the supermarket that you passed. From your center and from your heart, opening to a deeper connection with them. And opening our compa capacity even more, now bringing our awareness to those that we might call adversaries or enemies. In this present moment, from your center and from your heart, with a connection with those in this meditation circle, from your center and from your heart, opening to a deeper connection with those you might call enemies or adversaries. And just like exercising a muscle, you get to play with certain people you might consider enemies or adversaries and see, can you open your heart 1% to them? Can you open your heart 10% to them? Is it still too soon to open your heart to them? That's all your practice and there's no good or bad. And now with more of an awareness of yourself, your surroundings, your connection with this meditation circle and your connection from your center and from your heart with all human beings, whether they be friends, strangers or adversaries, deep into your heart, from your center and from your heart, take a full breath in, in through your nose and out through your mouth. And taking a moment to do an inventory and check in to feel this expanded capacity of your personal power and your heart power, your presence and awareness. Your capacity to influence and impact in a beneficial way. Now maintaining the sense of expansion for whatever that means for you or whoever that feels for you, keeping that sense of expansion as we now bring our focus back from the whole human family to bringing our full of attention and awareness to this group of meditators in this circle around the world.
and now bringing that awareness, holding on to that sense of your, your connection with the human family, with this circle of meditators, with that level of awareness and connection. Now bringing your focus, putting, placing your attention on your surroundings. And lastly, with that sense of expansion, now bringing your full attention back to your, yourself. With more of an awareness now with yourself, your surroundings, circle of meditators, the human family, and how you've taken that back to you. One final time, take a full breath in, in through your nose and out through your mouth. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes and shake out your body. <laughs> Hmm. Very grateful to share that with all of you and feel, feel the group energy in that. Is there anyone who wants to share um, if you had any discoveries or it's always nice if everyone can say in maybe one or two words what their experience was. Just briefly, because uh, we want to keep the time in them and uh, yeah. I could feel the difference this time in the um, with the presence of the Dutch, interesting, um, of feeling more um, global holding of compassion for what is um, I didn't have a, a, a sense to it, but it, I think around what's being held of what's unfolding in the United States at this particular moment and to feel the, the brethren for lack of a better term of being connected on a global sense in a global sense. Um, so that felt delicious and comforting in some way. And the other thing I will say is that, um, Toward the end, I noticed physiologically in my head and my jaw was really open and very, um, like my, my head cavity was spacious, and that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Shelley. Yeah, I think that this is, this is, you know, one of the, some of the phrases I use is let's let's weave a golden thread of lasting peace around the world. And the more we do this, the stronger the thread is. And the more people we get from different parts of the planet, the wider the net is. And, uh, and I'm just enjoying, enjoying at least from various parts of the United States, which is quite a massive part of the planet <laughs> in a way. <laughs> and in Holland. Um, as a as a good foundation. Similar to Shelley, just I felt big gratitude to be reminded that the heart is the highest form of intelligence, and then the just the sweetness of being together with all of you on this call. It's like it was felt like nutrition somehow. Thank you, little vitamins for my soul or something. So thanks. Thank you. I'm hoping that that's what this can become. It's, be, it's like that for me, and I'm hoping it's like be that for more people with the craziness in the world or just the whatever, our own personal struggles, to have this um, to feel nurtured and connected. For, for yeah. me, it was, um, well, I liked Hank and Mika in the, uh, and Frank in the, in the call. For me, there was this curiosity of so what is different in energy this time. 
And I felt more space, you know, like more expansion. So that's uh, and it makes sense, right? Certain people, but yeah, that was what I noticed. And it was a lot of physical discomfort for me personally. So there was always the struggle of the discomfort, and then back into the meditation, back to my core, back to my heart, and the connection. So that was a a nice uh, bouncing in and out experience. I want to just make sure I emphasize that the part of the practice of opening our hearts to, to, to those we consider adversaries, and I think I've said this a number of times, it's not so much that anything has to change in the outside world with how we treat those people. <laughs> it's more about what we're, we're using them as, an, as a meditation object to increase our capacity for resilience and our capacity for compassion. Uh, and our, and therefore, with our resilience, our wisdom, and our compassion, our increasing our capacity to be of service, to have an impact, and that it's, so we're using it as an edit, meditation object uh, to be able to move through the world in a, in a more effective way that way for all beings. Feel compelled to add that. <laughs> <laughs> especially at this time. Um, maybe a couple of words, just a word or two from the rest of you, if you, you don't have to, and if you prefer not to speak, you can also type in the chat. Well, it felt very good to feel the space around me and the connection with the, all the people who are uh, really uh, committed to bring good to this earth and also to the situation in uh, America, which can be improved a lot. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of weaving the golden thread. Yeah. So we keep continuing that. Thank you, Mika. Yeah. I guess I, I would just I would just say that it's it's really helpful to me to find uh, groups of people where um, you can at least momentarily get out of the um, spin or the uh, fear that's that circulates, hmm. and to know that there are, that there are other people who are willing to just even for forty five minutes get out of that. I think that's a really helpful thing to have. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. Hi there. <laughs> Hi. Frank here. Hi. I was a little bit late. Uh, I was working and uh, I think I, I go to uh, uh, this meeting and uh, it's great to see how you feel uh, other peoples around the world. Yeah. It's amazing. Nice. <laughs> nice job, John. <laughs> Thank you. I was trying to discern whether my experience was raw or open or both. Um, and I actually think it started this morning seeing a picture of you, Joe, with, is it Mikey? Mika. Mika, Mika, um, and there's just this joy in your face, Mika, um, that sent a message over the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just continued, a few of us had a call this morning and there was so much generosity of heart that, um, I just feel very full. Um, I, I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because it feels abundant, um, which is just in so much, there's so much gratitude um, that we can be living in these circumstances and still experience the joy and the compassion. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Mm 
Okay. If no one else wants to share. Um, I think he's trying to say something, but I can't hear. Oh. Yeah. There. Hello, can you hear me? Now you can hear, yes. Yes? Okay. Um, I feel very grateful. Also, in during the meditation, I really um, feel my heart and I feel very relaxed on the out breath. Um, and I feel especially very grateful for the discipline and the rhythm of you, Joe, that you keep on doing this, mm. no matter. So uh, thank you very much for that, because we need that as well. Yeah. Thank you, Ninka. Thank you. Okay, uh, so um, as always, we've started with a motivation. We did our practice. We generated a lot of, from my traditions, we would say positive merit. And I'm, I'm beginning to use a new phrase that I think is uh, kind of for this time and kind of American, call it spiritual capital. <laughs> uh, we're generating a lot of spiritual capital. So, you know, what are we investing our capital in? So I want to end with a dedication. And for you, just for yourself, uh, two vading, a dedication for, for uh, where would you like to direct this energy? Towards, uh, towards healing, towards abundance, towards growth, and specifically for maybe aspects of your life, for, for people in your life who could use a little bit of this energy, for groups of people for cultures, for um, countries. And I always add a few that I, that I, that I keep bringing in, becoming my trademark, I think. <laughs> and you can add others if you want to speak it also. But I always say, may all beings have access to enough food and fresh water. May all governments govern from a place of wisdom as opposed to fear. And may we really understand and decipher between that we're never going to resolve the what if we don't focus more on the how we are communicating. That, that insi insight suddenly breaks through to everyone. And as a way to close this, close this, a final breath, deep breath in and out. And it's, you, you now know the times, it's every week at this time, 11.15 uh, a.m. on the East Coast of the United States, 5.15 uh, p.m. when the clocks change uh, in <laughs> the Netherlands. If you know people who might be interested, please invite them and have them join in and spread the word on Facebook or whatever social media platforms you use or your groups that you're involved with. The more, and particularly people you know in different parts of the planet, it might be fun to get to see if we can get other countries involved. And with that, I say goodbye. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Danielle, for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure having you on here as well. Thank you for, for, for being here. And, uh, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.